Welcome to the review. Welcome to the first review of 2020, featuring two of my favorite cameras so far on the market. Nikon Z6 with the Atomos Ninja 5 versus the Fuji X-T3. So, you saw the intro shots. That was all shot with the Nikon Z6 using the Atomos Ninja 5, shooting in ProRes HQ. Now, with that being said, we're gonna give the Fuji a chance here. But before we get started, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. The Fuji X-T3 is an APS-C body. This here, the Nikon Z6, is a full frame body. I really don't care. I'm really just looking for the perfect system for me and my creativity and what I want to create with it, which is online Instagram content. Which mirrorless system should I really invest in? Because your boy is tired of switching cameras and looking for the perfect camera, and I've narrowed it down to these two specific bodies, full frame versus APS-C. Let's see which one's better for me and my creativity and what I do. Now it is a couple days after filming those clips. I have some thoughts about these cameras, some really good positive things, and some real big concerns. What I'm getting from the Nikon Z series of cameras is that they are literally the same as the Sony, except for the color issue that everyone seems to always be talking about with Sony, which isn't that bad, but it's definitely there. There's always been this weird tint to it. With the Nikon, you get the same features, the 120 FPS, the 60 frames per second, the 4K 30, pretty much the same sensor and low light, but with the Nikon colors. That being said, you do get a pretty big upgrade over the Sony cameras with the Nikon Z6 and 7 when you plug into the Atomos Ninja 5. You send your camera in, you are able to get ProRes RAW out of this camera, which is the only camera currently on the market other than the Blackmagic Pocket camera that I know of that can shoot RAW that is a mirrorless camera. Nikon was the first to that party. Is it worth it? Yes, definitely worth it. Uh, the ProRes coming off of this camera in general is just fucking insane with N-Log. I love it. It actually reminds me of when I shot with a C200 how this camera looks in grades. Paid 1300 bucks, uh, paid the $200 upgrade fee. You're paying less than 1600 bucks and you have a camera that's capable of shooting ProRes RAW, which is pretty much unheard of. I can barely handle just an Apple ProRes HQ coming off of this, but I will say if you are looking for a mirrorless option and it's a Sony alternative, which is the next best thing, and you want full frame, I'm gonna say definitely pick up and look at the Z6 because they definitely have them on sale and they, are, they have major deals, especially for the refurbished models for about 13 to 1400 bucks, to be honest. Um, still suffering from some out of focus issues. It kind of locks on to random things. I might, it might be user error. I might not have it set up correctly, but uh, that's just something that I've just noticed. That's not too bad. It's not Sony equivalent, not Canon equivalent. I would say, Fuji and Nikon are pretty much the same thing when it comes to autofocus. But speaking of Fuji, waiting on my pre-order for the X-T4 that I was tempted to cancel in order to buy this camera. Matter of fact, let's switch over to the Fuji X-T3 shooting an F-Log using the Atomos Ninja 5 to see what quality is actually better in normal lighting. Let's get to it. Okay, and this is the X-T3 using the Atomos Ninja 5 that I'm recording to now. Uh, I'm really digging this camera. I've always dug this camera. But personally, to be honest, I really do prefer the look of the Nikon. But I still really do enjoy the look of the X-T3 and F-Log. So I can only imagine what the X-T4 is going to look like. I'm pretty sure it has the same sensor. So this test will be equivalent pretty much all the way across the board with the exception of the lack of IBIS and the X-T4 having IBIS. The Fuji beats out the Nikon for me and what I want to use it for just because you got 4K 60, you have internal 10-bit 420, you have 10-bit 422 output 
and you're able to still shoot an F-Log internally. The lack of analog internally for the Nikon Z6 is a major turnoff for me, so I think that really sucks to only have to shoot in their flat profile, which doesn't give you nearly as much dynamic range as analog does, nor the quality that you get when you output to the Ninja 5. You're able to get pretty similar quality and body internally with the Fuji, and you can't do that with the Nikon. So that's why I'm gonna stick with the Fuji. You're able to push the colors just a little bit more with the internal 10-bit, not to mention you're able to record to the Atomos Ninja 5 and then get the 10-bit 422 if you need it. Either way it goes, you still get 10-bit and you get it internally with the Fuji. Nikon currently doesn't have that, but I'm pretty sure once they add that internally into the Nikon Z6 II, whatever they're gonna call it, the next series of Z cameras will be nothing to play with, no slouch, because the Z6 and Z7 um, are basically Nikon's first attempt at a mirrorless camera and they pretty much knocked it out of the park with the exception of some very janky autofocus at times and the lack of a log file and only internal 8-bit, pretty much what the Sony's lacking.